This is a really simple trick to up your mental math game, or just to make it easier to do calculations by hand without a calculator. We're going to use the distributive property in order to make finding the product of two numbers a little bit easier. The distributive property, you may recall, tells us that multiplication distributes across addition and across subtraction, so a times b plus c is the same as ab plus ac. We're going to use this property to solve the following four simple multiplication problems in a way that could be done in our heads with some practice. We'll start with 42 times 11. Most likely, you don't have that one memorized, so how do we go about calculating it quickly? One way is to use the distributive property. It's not super easy, perhaps, to multiply by 11 or 42, but it is pretty easy to multiply by multiples of 10. So we want to rewrite this problem so that a multiple of 10 is involved. I notice that 11 is really close to 10, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this product as 42 times 10 plus 1. This is certainly valid since 10 plus 1 is 11, so this is still 42 times 11. Then I can use the distributive property. That tells me this product will equal 42 times 10 plus 42 times 1. So 42 times 11, that's not super easy, but I've rewritten it into something that is super easy. 42 times 10 is just 420, and 42 times 1 is just 42. And so our final answer, 42 times 11, is 462. Go ahead and give the next one a try yourself if you think you got a hang of it. 72 times 13. You could rewrite 72 as 70 plus 2, and that would work, but it'll probably be easier if we split up the 13 instead. So we'll rewrite this as 72 times 13, but I'm going to rewrite 13 as 10 plus 3. Now we can use the distributive property to turn this into a sum of simpler products. So this will equal 72 times 10 plus 72 times 3. 72 times 3 isn't that difficult, but you might want to use this strategy again in order to carry it out. So bringing this all together, 72 times 10 is 720. Like I said, we could use the distributive property again and write out the process to calculate 72 times 3. But when you've just got a single digit, I think that's a great time to try doing this in your head. The way I do this in my head is splitting up 72 into 70 plus 2. And then 70 times 3 is 210. 2 times 3 is 6, so the answer is 216. So we've got to add 216, and that becomes 936. That's 72 times 13. Now give the next one a try, 52 times 69. You could try rewriting 52 as 50 plus 2, that would work just fine, but I'm actually going to rewrite the 69 just to show you another way of doing this. So I'm going to make this 52 times 69, but instead of writing 69 as 60 plus 9, Really, 69 is closer to 70 than it is 60, so I'm going to rewrite it as 70 minus 1. This is just going to keep the numbers I'm working with smaller. Now, I just have to distribute the 52 across the subtraction, so this becomes 52 times 70 minus 52 times 1. Now 52 times 70, you could use this same strategy we've been using to evaluate that, but I'll walk you through how I do it in my head. Instead of multiplying by 70, since it's a multiple of 10, I'm just going to multiply by 7 and then bring a factor of 10 in at the end to finish my answer. So then 52 times 7, how will we do that? 
Well, just split up the 52 into 50 plus 2. 50 times 7 is 350. 2 times 7 is 14. Bring them together to 364. And then bring in that factor of 10 from the 70. So 364 becomes 3,640. And then we subtract 52. So our final answer is 3,588. All right, on to the last one, 123 times 104. Just want to show you this strategy also works for numbers that are more than two digits. But instead of focusing on splitting up with a multiple of 10, we'll focus on multiples of 100. So I'm going to rewrite this as 123 times 104, but I'll split 104 up into 100 plus 4. If it had been 192, for another example, I probably would have rewritten it as 200 minus 8. Now, for this example, we've just got to finish with the distribution and then do the multiplication and addition. So, this is 123 times 100 plus 123 times 4. And both of these are really easy to calculate. 123 times 100 is 12,300. And then 123 times 4, again, we can just use the distributive property to do this one. It's pretty easy to do in your head. I'll write out the steps. 123 times 4, we're just going to split up 123 in order to solve this problem. So I'm going to rewrite it as 100, and then I could say plus 23, but if I really wanted to break this down, I could rewrite it as plus 20 plus 3, and all of this is getting multiplied by 4. The distributive property works the same way when we've got three things inside of the parentheses. Now, 4 just needs to get multiplied by 100, by 20, and by 3. So this is going to equal 4 times 100 plus 4 times 20 plus 4 times 3. And that's 400 plus 80 plus 12, so 492. Hopefully this shows you how you can use this strategy to split up bigger numbers. Coming back to the problem that we were doing, 123 times 104, we see that it's 12,300 plus 492. So our final answer, which I guess I'll have to write here because I'm running out of room, is 12,700. 92. So that's how we can use the distributive property to find the product of two numbers without a calculator. And this trick works really well for multiplying numbers together in your head. Give it a try and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See through big glass jar.